Hi everybody, my name is Tash and I am a medical student at King's College London. Today I wanted to jump on here and share with you my ideas on how to get work experience if you're looking to study medicine in 2021. As I know a lot of you out there are really worried, really stressed about how to find work experience. Obviously it goes without saying, there's currently a bit of something called coronavirus going on. So before we get stuck into the video, please, please, please make sure you hit subscribe to my channel for lots, lots, lots more about my life as a medical student, top tips for getting into medical school, and just general chit chats about mental health, about living in London, what else, about whatever new random cardigan I've managed to find. So make sure you hit like if you find it useful and subscribe. I also talk all about studying medicine and my life, how to get into medicine over on my Instagram, which you can find at Tash Binney. So without further ado, let's get straight on into today's video. So I think it's quite helpful just to break down what work experience actually is. And yes, the most obvious answer might seem it's something that you need to do in order to apply for medicine, which is partly true. But if you think about why the medical schools want you to do work experience, it's because studying medicine is a five or six year long degree, which is quite a long time, especially when you're 18, that's almost a third of your life so far. And becoming a doctor is a very big, thing <laughs> to start doing. Um, it can be a very a stressful career at times, it can be a very rewarding career, so you just need to make sure that you have a good insight into what the career as a doctor actually involves so you can see whether you will enjoy being a doctor or not. So with all that being said, there are so many ways that you can gain work experience, which may not seem, which aren't your traditional sort of shadow a doctor around a hospital. So number one, the first way that you can get work experience is by reading a book. Now, there are so many books out there about life as a doctor, about medicine, about health, about healthcare, and they can give you probably, arguably, a better insight into the career than just spending a day with one type of doctor. So my personal favourites, for different reasons, are This Is Going To Hurt by Adam Kay. This is a really good, realistic, somewhat focusing on the negative sides of medicine, which is really important to be able to be aware of, first of all, be able to discuss this at an interview and be able to show that these things don't put you off because you, you've thought about them and you have ways and coping mechanisms to deal with these things. So for example, it might be really long hours um, and a bit of a stressful job working on sociable hours. You are aware of this, but you will make the time when you do have time off to see your friends, your family and your loved ones. Um, and you will make sure that you schedule your time so that you have time for all of the things that you enjoy doing outside of medicine, for example, playing sport. My next category of books is kind of special areas of medicine. So my top three are War Doctor by David Knott, so the title kind of gives it away. The Prison Doctor by Dr. Amanda Brown, which again, the title kind of gives it away, a doctor working in a prison. And finally, Dear Life by Rachel Clark. Now, Dear Life is about a palliative care doctor and it's absolutely amazing. And I think as an aspiring medical student, if you have an idea about, first of all, what palliative care is, why it's important, that would be absolutely amazing. Now, it goes without saying that you don't need to read every single book that I mention. The big thing with work experience is that it's quality over quantity of things. And then finally, some sort of wider reading, I would really, really, really recommend Michael Marmot's The Health Gap. This kind of gives you an idea about health inequalities, which obviously have been massively highlighted during coronavirus because unfortunately we know that those from certain ethnicities um, are more likely to have worse outcomes if they are to come into contact with coronavirus. So kind of exploring that and seeing, yeah, I think that's a really big area and I'd really, really recommend it. And I just found it so fascinating to read. Of course, this is not an extensive list. There are so many out there. If you'd like me to do um, 
a more detailed books to studying medicine, let me know in the comments and I will definitely, definitely do that. So the second thing that you can do is listen to podcasts. Now I'm an absolute podcast junkie. I love listening to a good podcast. Um, there are so many sort of medical related ones. My favorite is called Sharp Scratch and this is by BMJ Student and they kind of cover topics that we're not taught at medical school. So they can be really interesting topics. I definitely, definitely recommend giving that a listen. The next podcast suggestion is um, Dr. Alex George's The Waiting Room. Um, in this podcast, he interviews people, um, different healthcare professionals from different um, areas of healthcare. So it's very much a multidisciplinary team kind of discussion, which is really, really important as doctors and future doctors that we're aware of the people that we're going to be working with. Next is Future Frontline's podcast. So this is a bit biased because I am the co-founder of Future Frontline, but in this podcast series, we interview different healthcare students about why they chose that degree, um, what it involves, that job, which is really important, especially at medical school interviews where you get a question like, why not nursing or why not physician associate? Um, if you have an awareness of what these roles do, then it will really help you pinpoint why you're choosing medicine over nursing, for example. The next thing that you can do is you can do an online course. So there are medicine work experience specific ones like the Bryson and Sussex Medical School's online work experience. There's also something called Observe GP by the Royal College of General Practitioners. And then there are loads and loads by Future Learn, which is an online resource with so many thousands of different courses. And I think there are about over 200 healthcare and medicine specific ones. So my big top tip would be to choose something that you're interested in. Um, this morning I saw that Beat, the eating disorder charity has just released a sort of training resource for medical students and healthcare professionals on how to care for and look after somebody with an eating disorder. So my biggest thing would both podcast, books and courses is to choose something that you will enjoy or choose something that you know absolutely nothing about. Um, don't force yourself to just get through something that you really, really don't like doing. There's no point. So the next thing that can contribute towards work experience is volunteering. So there are so many ideas for volunteering. At the moment, there's a lot of vaccination centers um, giving the coronavirus vaccines that are really, really needing volunteers more of the logistics side of things rather than actually injecting people. What I did was I volunteered at a hospital, so they had a volunteer program um, and I volunteered there. I'm not sure how that's working with coronavirus, but definitely some something to check out. You could also have a look at your local mental health charities. I know friends that volunteered for MIND. There's also a charity which helps um, parents deal with losing a baby called Beyond Bayer, which has some great resources online. Um, and they also let me know that they are looking for volunteers. So I will put the link to Beyond Bayer in my little description box. But it's not only voluntary work that could count towards work experience. It could also be your paid job role. So maybe you worked at Tesco or another supermarket um, or anything else. There are loads of things that you can get from that experience that will help you become a better doctor. So the next thing that you can do, which I still do now, is watch documentaries. Now, unfortunately, I don't mean things like House or Grey's Anatomy. I mean real life factual documentaries. So there's something called GPs Behind Closed Doors on Channel 5 and it basically is what it says on the tin. They have cameras in um, GP appointments, filming different kind of consultations, so you see the interaction. We actually use these recordings for our own learning at medical school, so it's definitely a resource that medical schools value. There's also a program on iPlayer called Hospital. And again, this is so good because the recent series looks at how one of the hospitals in London dealt with the two waves of coronavirus. Um, so definitely really topical and something great to talk about at interview. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on talking about how to reflect on these experiences. Again, that is something that I can do in another video if you'd be interested. But the main thing is 
what did you learn from those things it's not i read this book i listened to this podcast i did this that 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 i don't care about that i don't care what it is just tell me what you learned tell me how that's going to make you a better doctor so i hope you found this video helpful if there's anything that you'd like me to talk about in more detail leave it in the comments and i will try my best to make something useful on that topic so click like subscribe to my channel follow my Instagram and I will see you all next time. Bye everybody.